Hey everybody, welcome back to Orléans, where we had last left our heroes star staring down the barrel of plague cups or plague bags, and now we gotta decide what we're gonna do about it. Right. Well, see, here's the thing. I just got this knight. I would love to use him to go on a boat ride or a wagon ride or to build a guild house, but that means he's gotta go back in the cup. And then I got to draw, and if I draw him, he dies to plague. And I just, you know, spent three guys a whole turn getting him. So it's a big gamble. Now, if I'm smart, all I want to do is I just want to use my starter guys because they can never die. If I use them and put them back in the bag, when I draw them back, it's so like if I just send, you know, my, um, my three of my four guys, my, my starter guys, and, uh, but see, here's the thing. I'd hire somebody. The person I hire might die. But at least if I hire somebody, at least I get to keep the automation or the building or whatever. Or, you know, I could say, I could be, no, I, you know, I got this knight, he's itching to go, we're going to build a guild house, gosh darn it, with this farmer. All right. So I'm going to do that, and my knight might die. <sighs> See, I could, I could actually tr um, try to very, well, but it wouldn't be, I mean, there's not enough time. Uh, you know, if I built a sacristy, um, and I had a monk, I could use that. This building lets me avoid the bad stuff that comes, um, you know, the taxes and the plagues and stuff like that. But I certainly don't have enough time to pull that off before the plague hits. So I think there's really no help in it. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to build a guild house because I want to start moving forward. And so what am I going to do with the rest of these guys? These three guys together, oh, they can, they can hire another knight. So you know what? If at least if I lose a knight, I'll have gotten another knight. Although, having two knights, that's just doubling the chance I'm going to lose a knight. But what the heck. I mean, having another knight also means I increase the amount of cards or chits I can draw every turn. So we'll go with that. All right, now over here to Jen. Now, she is so bummed she did not hire that sea captain. Because what she wanted to do was go to the dwarf, get another craftsman so she could automate the uh, the need for a scholar. Because the first automation you ever get has to go on a farmer. So Jen replaced this farmer need. But after that, you can cover up anything except for a scholar action or a monk action itself. So Jen could have put another one over here and then her two merchants could just keep making monks and making wine every turn. But the sea captain was not very obliging. So all her plans have now changed because she cannot do any of these without the sea captain. So what can she do? Well, she could. She could hire a scholar, which... You know, she was thinking she didn't need a scholar because she was just going to automate the need for scholars instead. Although the other thing hiring a scholar does is it lets you move forward too on the progress track. And that means Jen would be very close to being the first to grab this person. And remember, these people, they are worth points at the end of the game. You know, these, like, uh, uh, these are VIPs. These are very important people in the community. So if Jen befriends this person, at the end of the game, he might be worth four, five, even six points. So it's not like that's a waste of time. Yeah, with that, Jen's going to do that. Although, here's the other thing, too. Um, you know, so, Jen, she's putting three regular guys in, and she'll also end up putting her scholar. She'd hate to lose that scholar right away. Well, she doesn't mind too much, because she's planning on automating anyway. But if she puts this other merchant, she might lose her merchant as well, due to the plague. But you know what? She's going to take a chance anyway. So that's what she's done. And then she's got this other guy, who can't really do anything by himself, and that's fine. She doesn't want to risk losing him to plague as well. So we've, we've done it. We've programmed all our actions. Now I'm the first player. And what the heck? I'm going to go ahead and do these guys. One, two, three. And I got myself another Knigget. And I'm two ahead. I've almost um, you know, it, it, um, found this very influential friend myself. All right. And so now Jen's going to do an action. She will go on ahead and do her uh, Scholar. Goes in there, and she moves forward one, which means she moves forward two. Okay, now I'm going to do another one. I'm going to build a guild house. Boop, boop, boop. First to build a guild house. Now, guild houses, um, like, and I'm going to build it where we are right now in Orléans. Okay, so there we go. So, hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so I built a guild house. Guild houses themselves are like these special, you know, VIP citizens. They are worth the number of points that you have. And it's pretty likely over the course of the 18 rounds, you know, we're going to make it up to at least four. They'll be at least worth four points every building I build. But again, they could be five or six. Although if I'm really slack on it, maybe they'll only be worth three or even two points. Currently, this house is worth nothing. Once I've moved up a little bit, it'll be worth two. Okay, so I built a guild house. 
And although, another thing, whoever has the most guild houses on the board at the end of the game gets another VIP. This guy just, just waiting to see whoever builds the most guild houses. All right, so Jen had one more action. She's doing her wine again. So she just scored three more points. All right. And we're done. Everybody's done all their actions. I used all my guys. Jen used all but one of her guys because she had automation. And so this guy isn't, but now it's time for the plague. And I'm hoping, remember, I look in here, I want to draw one of my normal guy, one of my starter guys, because they can't die. But I got to come back here. I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Oh, please. Oh, oh, phew. Okay. I didn't lose anybody to the plague. That was very, very scary. Now, Jen, she goes through the same terror. Ah, and what is she gonna get? She draws, boom, not so lucky for Jen. She just lost her merchant. Ah, and having multiple merchants was kind of center to her whole thing, because she has, ah, oh, that was back, that was practically the worst thing she could have drawn. She would have much rather drawn that scholar because she was planning on automating scholar actions anyway. You know what, losing that merchant, that might change her plans entirely. Maybe she'll, ah, uh, well, oh, well, so. The plague got that scholar, the one she just hired, but at least she still moved forward on the progress before he died. Okay, so now uh, first player turns and we start and we see what the next round is and it is, ah, money for progress. This is the second of three. And so now Jen's very close. If Jen just moves, ah, see, now this is really pushing her. Maybe she wants to go on ahead and hire another scholar so that she can get across here so that she will make two points off of this, um, I, yeah, so that's interesting. But anyway, so that's the new event that's out. We have to check the census. I'm still in the lead. I'm still just earning a point every turn as long as Jen doesn't hire another farmer to catch up with me on that. Now we draw. I get to draw six guys, which I think means, how many are there in here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, there's seven. So we'll see what I miss. We'll see what I don't get. One, two, three, four, five. No boat captains. Give me a boat captain. Give me a boat. Oh, phew. And so that means I left behind one of my knights. If I hadn't drawn that boat captain, I would have been very sad. Because again, without the boat captain, I, well, I could have still built, I could, I could have traveled on the road. But, you know, not having a boat captain really limits you in a lot of ways. Maybe I should hire another boat captain so I've got more flexibility that way. But anyway, so I've drawn mine. Now, Jen, she's still only drawn four because she hasn't hired any knights. One, two, so here's her captain. Three, four. Oh, wow, and she didn't get her merchant. That is redonkulous. So since she didn't get her merchant, now she's got her scholar, but she didn't get her, she, she, one of her merchants died, and her other one, he must still be sick. They must have been friends, and so he's still working off that plague. Crap, so now Jen, well, you know what she could do? Since she's short on merchants now, she could get another craftsman and automate this, and then this guy, his full-time job could be to get, and that makes sense. But that means, now another thing, you can only apply one automation. Jen can't fill this other space. You can only apply one of the spaces of any building towards automation. But, you know, all right, well, let's see. So Jen's got, she, all right, so what else could she do with this guy? She could, well, she doesn't have a knight, so she can't go to the scriptorum to continue. Now, one thing, she, ah, oh, she'd like to get another scholar now because that would push her, she'd go, score this VIP citizen and she'd be at the two, so she'd score two points. But she didn't get a merchant. She's got the farmer and the craftsman. So if she, so that means she can't, she doesn't have another farmer, so she can't come over here to get another craftsman to fill this, so she can't do it. Oh my gosh, that is insane. Uh, now, no, she could try to build a bibliotheque, but there wouldn't be time to build it. So Jen, because this guy stayed home, oh my gosh. What a terrible draw. And so Jen's gonna miss her chance to score points off of that. Well, then she might as well forget about that and what she's gonna do instead. I guess she will go on ahead, go to the dwarf. She'll come up here so she'll automate that. And what's this guy gonna do? Well, by himself, there's not much he can do. So he'll just wait. So there we go. Okay, so that's Jen's plan. She's gonna automate that so she'll get, oh, that was, that was disappointing. Okay, now over here, I can do all kinds of stuff. Okay, 
I think it's time to hit the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Life I love is making music with my friends and my connigate. All right, so I'm gonna go on the wagon. The reason I'm doing that is because I look around. So now I have built a guild house here. I can only build one guild house in Orléans. And in fact, Orléans is interesting. Each, all players could build a guild house here, but out in the world, every place else is so small, only one person could ever build a guild house. So there's a race to travel these roads and get to these towns and build guild houses as fast as possible before all the prime real estate is gone. Plus, if I travel down a road, I'll pick up this. This is worth five points. And then if I build a guild house here, then I can come down here, another five points. So there's a very strong argument to be made. Now that I've got my knights and my farmers, I want to keep using this wagon and, and really start cleaning up over there. So I'm going to move, and then I've got these guys, and that would be enough to go to the dwarf so I can hire somebody else. Okay, perfect. All right, cool. There we go. Everything's done. Jen goes first. First thing she's going to do, she's going to go to the dwarf. And what's she? All right, she's going to hire another craftsman. Goes in the bag, and she gets another automation, and she'll put it on this cloister. So now, her one scholar, as long as she keeps drawing him, he will keep studying and um, producing more monks for Jen. And remember, monks are powerful. They're wild cards. They're very useful. But unfortunately, Jen's not going to get to use her winery this turn because they're stupid. All right. And so that was Jen's action. And then my action is I will go to, I will go on the road again. All right, so... I could travel north, but see, then I'm surrounded by a bunch of wheat, so I'm going to travel south. I'll pick this up on the way. That's five points. And now I'm in uh, Virzun or something like that. Virion. I don't know how to pronounce it. So there. And that'll be a new place. I can build another house, and then I can keep traveling. Okay. And now Jen, she um, is going to activate the glacier, so this guy goes back. The automation stays, and Jen is the first person to get a monk. And she better draw this guy. Nothing's worse than going through all the trouble in the mass nations to hire one of these wild card monks, and then they just stay in the cup, turn after turn after turn. They can be real jerks. All right, and then I've got one more action. I'm going to the dwarf. And let's see, now what do I want to hire? Hmm, I think I'd like to automate some stuff too. So I'm going to get on the automation track. I'm going to hire a craftsman. And what am I going to automate? Now remember, the first automation I ever do has to be a farmer. Since I want to build a lot of guild houses, I'm going to make it easier to build guild houses in the future. Or am I? Because I could make it easier to do that, or heck, I can make it easier... Hmm. <laughs> See, because here's the thing. Um, it's so easy to get farmers... Maybe it's, it's much harder to get knights. Maybe I want to make it, but I mean, but I can't do. Right now, I have to replace a farmer. The first automation you do has to replace a farmer. Um, you know what? I think, I think I will replace it over here in the dwarf. So in the future, that means the farmers I have are free to be able to do the movement around the world. And so I don't need to use farmers to hire more basic workers in the dwarf. So that was the automation I set up. And there we are. Okay. And so we've both done our actions. Now the event happens, nobody scored the two points they could have scored by getting up here. And so now, player order changes, a new event comes out, and oh, for every house you've got, you make a point. That's perfect for me, because I already, and heck, if I can build another house, but we'll have to see, we'll have to wait and see, because it, first of all, I get a point for staying ahead on the farm track. Oh, see, Jen's got six points, and I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten points. I am four points ahead of Jen. But, you know, she's done more automation than me. She's also further along on the development track than me. All right. But anyway, so I get to draw six. Let's see what comes out of the sack, Jack. One, two, three, uh, four, five, and six. Wow. My sea captain says, uh-uh, I'm staying in today. So no, no going to the village, no hiring more knights. No riding a ship, et cetera, et cetera. But I got my two knights. So I definitely know I'm going to build another guild house because there's going to be points for it at the end of the round. Meanwhile, I see Jen is still only drawing four because she hasn't got any more knights. One, two, three, four. Yay! Okay, she got her wild card and she got her scholar back. So she's going to be able to make another one. Okay, pretty cool. All right, so that's it. We're all done drawing. And so Jen, sea captain. Yeah, so Jen's leaving three in the bag now every turn. Okay. So, when we start planning. Okay, I know I want to build another house so I can score more points thanks to the event. Which means a farmer has to come up here and my craftsman. And now, what can these three guys do? Well, I believe after that farmhouse is built, they're going to get on the road again. They just can't wait to get on the road again. So, I'm done. Let's see. Now, what's Jen going to do? 
So she knows she's going to make another wild card. She's going to start making some more wine, get back on the old wine kick. And now she's got these guys. You know what? I think Jen has seen me um, succeed on the census for long enough. She's going to send one of her craftsmen over to the Bauer house and her um, monk, which is a wild card. So she'll it'll fill in for a captain. And so now Jen is going to get another farmer. And then she's still got this craftsman who really can't do anything. Well, no, that's not fair. That's not true. You know, this is two turns in a row. Jen hasn't done anything with this craftsman. I think Jen's going to send this craftsman to the, um, to the town hall. All right. Because she's going to, I mean, she clearly doesn't need him. She's Because she's already got, she, she's got three craftsmen. I think she's going to start thinning her deck and getting rid of one. Okay, so that's it. We're all done. I'm going to be the first player. First thing I'm going to do is these guys are going to build me another guild house. And now Jen's going to do something. She'll go on ahead and make some more wine. See, actually, there's only so much wine you can make. So Jen doesn't mind if she skips a couple of turns. I guess it's really not that big a deal. Um, I argue maybe even this is kind of wasteful to have done this automation, but we'll see. So Jen's made some more wine, and now I'm going to get on the road again, and I'm going to travel south, and boom, collect another five points, just sitting there waiting for me. And now Jen, she is going to go to the cloister and hire another monk. She has more wild cards, and now I'm all done. There's nothing else I can do, but Jen's doing a third thing. She's going to the rat house. Whenever a character, and you can put up to two of them in here, and you can therefore send one or two of them to a matching spot. So Jen could have her craftsmen help build the cathedral, help build the Stadtmauer, or help build sewers. I think she'll just go on ahead and do this because coming here gives her two bucks. Building up here gives her one buck. Coming down here gives her one buck or an increase. Oh, if she increased, she could get this guy. But she's pretty confident she's getting it because I haven't made any moves. But she would like to score this now and just get it done. Yeah, I think she'll do that instead. She'll start working on, on the sewers. And because she's contributed to the sewers, she'll take this and she has just scored a citizen, which is currently worth nothing. But then she'll, soon he'll be worth two, three, four, etc., etc. Okay. So, and Jen has thinned her deck a little bit because that was two turns in a row where she didn't use that guy. So clearly he wasn't necessary. Now, there's something else that's interesting going on here. If all of these spaces get filled over the course of the game, whoever puts the last one down gets this VIP. Now, in a two-player game, that's pretty unlikely. Jen, if she wanted to, she could have started working on the cathedral because she might actually fill all these spaces up herself without help from me. Uh, because she's got monks, maybe she'll get to the point where she can start giving some monks up and she can score that guy. But right now, I think she cared more about moving forward on the progress track. Okay, so there we go. Even if she'll never fill all these up. Right. So that was her. So we're all done. Now the event happens and I make two points because I've got two buildings. One, two. Okay. And that's it. So next round, Jen is the first player. We find out what the event will be. More plague. Oh, scary stuff. Okay. Now, oops, I forgot. Oh, I forgot. One Jen did one more thing. Oopsie. She got herself a farmer. How could I forget that? which means she moved up on the board and she got some wheat as well. And so my um, census days are over. I do not get a free throwaway point anymore because Jen is caught up with me on the farmers. Okay, and now we got to draw our characters. I'm drawing six, Jen's drawing four. And anybody she leaves behind in there is going to be subject to plague. Let's see what happens. Um, one, two... Three, four. All right. Well, um, Jen's really starting to feel she needs to get herself a knight. Only drawing four is really starting to hurt. Um, but anyway, so worry about that in a second. I get to draw six. One, two. Three, four. Five, six. And who did I leave behind? One of my knights and my farmer. Both of those guys could die in the plague. All right. And so now we get to start um, doing stuff. Jen is really starting to regret that she has not bought this sacristy because then she could use one of her monks to... But she can't. All right. Well, anyway, so Jen's definitely going to get another monk. And she'll use her monk as a wild card to get more wine because he might... Although, you know, if she doesn't, she doesn't have to worry about her monks dying if she doesn't activate them, if they stay out of the cup. Currently, Jen's cup is filled almost entirely with her starter characters. Yeah, so maybe she doesn't want to put anybody in the cup. 
Wow. You know what I think Jen's going to do? I think she's going to send another guy. She's gotten another one of these workers off to the rat house. She'll see here. If she puts this here, he'll go back in the cup, and the monk she goes will, will draw will go back in the cup too. And then she has a one in three chance of losing one of those guys. But she doesn't have to do this now. She could wait. She could take a breather. She could take a break. I mean, she could get this wine later. She could just choose to do nothing. She could put these guys in position, but not actually activate them, and then wait until the plague is passed. Because right now, if she had to draw from here, chances are she's safe. Worst case, she'll lose a, a farmer she doesn't really care that much about. Yeah, I think so. I think she's literally... Uh, yeah, she's not going to do anything. Wow. That's interesting. All right. Other than send this guy off to the rat house so she can make a little bit more progress on, well, maybe she'll make some money. Maybe she'll finally get over here so her people are worth points. So we'll worry about that later. So that's all Jen's doing because she's really worried about that plague. Now, this is the second plague, right? There's still going to be one more plague somewhere later coming up. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, do or die, I say. Plague schmeg. Let's get on the road again. Oh, no, no, no. Got to build a guild house before we move out. So bling. Blang, Bloom. Now this is interesting. This is throwing two guys who can't die and my knight back in. So, although I've got these guys, and, oh, look at this. Because I've automated my village, now it's much easier for me to do something village. So yeah, I would think, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all in. I'm gonna still do a bunch of stuff. Okay, so we're both done. Jen's first, all she's doing is um, getting rid of another dude. And what she's gonna do with this guy? She will... <sighs> I have a thing. She'll just keep on going with the canal and she'll move forward. So there we go. All right. So that's that. And Jen isn't doing anything else because she wants to avoid the plague. Like the plague. Literally. Okay. So now me. So all my other actions are going to happen. I'm going to build another guild house. And I'm just going to uh, live wild and die young due to plague, I think. So I'm going to do that. And I've gone back to the dwarf again. So I get to hire another one of the three. I could do some more automation. I could get a building of my own. Or I could make some money with another sea captain. I think I'd like to get a building of my own. So I'm going to build my first building, which means I'm getting another merchant. And now remember, it's my first building, so it has to be a level one building. Now, what would I like to get? What special power? Hmm. Well... I've got that extra farmer. I've, 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 I've made two farmers. Maybe I just want to go on ahead and uh, get the uh, hay barn so that I can start using that excess farmer just to make some points over the course of time. There's just a bunch of points sitting here. So I could do that. Interestingly, I could do the bathhouse. Now, there's a lot of controversy around the bathhouse. A lot of people say it's way overpowered, and it's, it's gotten so many complaints that the publisher and designer, uh, Reiner Stockhausen, has actually issued an FAQ changing its functionality. Its default functionality is draw three from your bag, and um, you know, ba basically only keep one, I believe. But they change it so it's only, draw two and keep one. So, uh, right. Draw three and choose two of them. Immediately place the chosen tiles on the appropriate. Oh no, yeah, it's, it's draw two. It's draw three and keep two. And I think they've changed it to draw two and keep one. I forget what it is. But so far, we, Jen and I, we've just left it out of the game because there's so many other buildings. We just haven't used it. But just bear in mind, there is quite a bit of controversy around this and it's, it's been nerfed. But I just don't remember what the nerf is. You know what? Actually, heck, I'm not going to build a building. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some more automation. Let's get this guy back out. I'm going to get another. Because see, there's only three more opportunities. There's only three more craftsmen to hire. So I'm going to get another automation. And what would I like to automate now? I've automated my dwarf. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't have a lot of merchants. So, see, I probably want to automate either my guild house building or my wagon building. Let's see. I will go on ahead and um, now I don't need a knight to ride the wagon. So my knight can w work elsewhere. Maybe I can even get a house and move on the same turn. So I can get really efficient about moving around the world. So that's where I took the automation. All right, so I've got two automation. And that's all I did. And Jen, all right, so now it is time for the plague. Jen's got to draw one. And it worked out fine for her. She avoided the plague. Me, I got a whole bunch, half the stuff in here might die of plague. But I'm feeling lucky. Well, do you, punk? Nope. 
Mr. Knigget just died. I just lost a knight. I was a little too cavalier, as it were, and so I just lost. So it's actually a good thing that I just automated my use for knights, because I just lost 50% of my knighthood. All right, so the plague has struck. That was it. And now we move on to the next round. We find out what the next event is. Plague again! Oh my gosh, you saw me reshuffle this. This is ridiculous. Wow. Okay. Although, on the, on the positive side, that's it. There's no more plague that's going to hit us anymore. Although there's still taxes and harvest we have to contribute to, but at least no more plague after this turn. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, let's see. We're still tied, so nobody gets any census money. And I get to draw six. Jen gets to draw four. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's my other knight. He's rip roaring ready to go. His buddy may have died, but he is ready to serve his liege. And now I get to, and Jen gets to draw four. I think she only has four in the book. No, she has five. So let's see what she gets. Uh, one, two, three, four. And she left behind her merchant. Her only merchant. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous again. Well, okay. <sighs> so Jen would like to be active, but once again, the plague staring right down. Is she going to waste? She just wasted a whole turn doing practically nothing to avoid the plague. Is she going to do it again? <sighs> wow. I don't know. What are the chances of the... Oh my gosh. All right. Well, I need, I need to hit the road. So, And using this guy and this guy, these guys can't die. So I don't mind them going back in the cup. Uh, and that craftsman, I don't mind if he dies really because I'm not using him very much. I mean, all I need him to build guild houses, but I've got another craftsman to build guild houses. I'm not worried about that. Now, this is interesting. Can I do it? I've got a knight. Oh my gosh, I can. Look at that. I have achieved it. Thanks to my automation, I am going to build a, I'm going to travel and build a guild house in the same turn. And then these guys, and you know what about that? These guys, they're going to hire me another farmer so that I can get ahead on the farmer track and start, um, earning my census money again. So I'm all set up. What is Jen going to do? Oh, she's got so many valuable characters, but she can't afford What the heck? She will do this, so she'll get another. She will send a guy to start. Well, no, she's all... How many more wine are there? One, two, three. She can wait on the wine. It can wait. It can wait. There's no reason to get somebody killed to make some wine when she's got plenty of time to build those wines. So she's not going to send anybody to the winery. She could... Let's see. And then so of her normal guys, these guys can't die. Who else is in here? Right. So there's a guy in there who can't die. She might lose this scholar. So what can she do with these? Hey, you know what? They can just come back to the village, uh, back to the old dwarf. They're going to hire somebody who might die, but they won't die. So she's got a pretty good chance. And she won't use her monks because she doesn't want to lose them to the plague. Okay. So everybody's set up. Let's get going. Alrighty. I'm first. I am going to be on the road again. And boom, another five points. I am cleaning up. And then Jen is going to do something. Now, actually, Jen and I have found we don't have to keep going back and forth. We just do all our actions. In a two-player game, it's not all that common that you overlap each other. But the only reason you have to do these in order is, I would think with more players, it's more likely that, oh, crap, both players want to go down a given road at the same time. Who's going to be able to do it first? Turn order matters. Both players want to grab the last craftsman because they both went to the village. Who goes first? Turn order matters. But Jen and I found in a two-player game, we very rarely overlap, so we can just go ahead and do all our actions. So I'm just going to go on ahead and build my guild hall in that town. All right, and was I doing anything else? Yes, I was also making myself another farmer. Boom, and I got another wheat for that, which is another point. Okay, and Jen, meanwhile, what was she going to do? She uh, is getting herself, she's really nervous about this. If she, you know, this, Gosh, you know what? I don't think she's going to. She doesn't want to lose that scholar. She doesn't want to take... So she's put the guy in place, but she's not going to use him yet. She's not going to hire. So all she's doing this turn is just going to the village, putting these guys back in. And what does she want to hire? Does she want to get more automation? Does she want to get another building? Or does she want to get a sea captain? I think she wants to get another building. So she's going to hire... Oops, why is she back here? She's already built. All right, yeah, okay. Oh, that's right, okay. She's going to hire, and now she can get a level two building. I see here. Like the, uh, the Ras Keller, which uses that scholar she's got plus the monks, four points whenever she activates this sucker. That scholar she got could be, can basically be a monk and become a wild card and do whatever she wants. Laboratorium, the laboratory, she can keep on, even after these guys are done and we can't do automation anymore, Jen can still create automation through the laboratory. Um, 
She could have her own wagon, and she doesn't need farmers because it's a horse-drawn carriage. And because um, you won't need farmers to drag us around anymore like I do, because I just keep, I automate, I don't need any security on mine. All right, so, uh, which of these does she want? Or she could get into level one, but she might as well go for a level two. Hmm. It would be kind of nice to, to this, with this school to turn her scholar into a wild card. Because then she can say, heck of it, she'll just start trying to get more scholars. Um, because, well, oh, it's easier to get monks. Or, I mean, she's getting monks. You know, I think she's going to do this. She's going to, once she's used her scholars to get all the monks, then she's just going to keep on using those monks and scholars to make her lots of money, and that'll catch her up towards the end of the game. All right, there we go. So now Jen is investing heavily in a scholar-based engine. So she's going to definitely want to get some more scholars over the course of the game. Which means you might want to automate in the university. Oh, does she want that one or does she want the automation engine? Nah, she'll go with this. All right. But she'll still probably want to put an automation in the university so she can make scholars more quickly so that they can keep producing. And then, you know, and they can come over here and eventually she can just throw them over there when she's done with them and score points off them by thinning her deck. Okay. So, Jen built a building that was all she did. And, um, oh, but of course she ended up picking up her second scholar. Which... Wait, no, no, she didn't do a scholar. She did a... Right, there. I'm getting myself confused. She did her merchant. Right. So she's throwing a merchant in the bag. The bag. Okay. And she's got two buildings now. Okay. And that was all she's doing. I've done all my stuff. And now our final plague is at hand. Let's see what we get. I lost a craftsman. Well, that's interesting. Before I lost this craftsman, only two more automations are going to be bought. But now a third one can be gotten. All right, let's see what Jen's going to do. That's hopefully paid off. Yes, she didn't lose anybody because that's one of her starting guys. She was very wasteful. She didn't really get a lot done for two turns, but she didn't lose anybody either. After she lost that first guy, me, I lost two guys to plague. Okay, so that was it. Um, the event's over. Turn order changes. And then, um, hey, more money for buildings. That's, that's three points sitting there for me, maybe four if I get another building built. And now we got to, oh, and I start making money again on the census. How many have I made here so far? One, two, three, four, five. I've made seven points so far off of just staying ahead on Farmerville. All right, so let's go ahead and turn this into a five. There we go. So I get to draw six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I was worried my knight wasn't going to come out. He, only just, he, almost, he almost stayed home today, but he did come out. All right, and so Jen gets to draw four. Which is, which is cool because, I mean, she's saved so many that she just hasn't used three, four. All right, there we go. Okay, and we know the event is buildings, which doesn't really help Jen at all. But what are we going to do? Let's see, can I get on the road again? I can build another building. And you betcha, I'm just going to keep on keeping on. All right, that's my whole plan. Captain is, you know, I could almost, if I had a... Well, that way, so that's what I'm going to do. What's Jen going to do? All right, she is no longer worried about plague. Finally, she can put these people to work. Back on the wine track. Um, right, this guy's going to generate a guy. Let's get her, let's, let's score four points at the rat seller. Or, you know, the, the rat skeller. What is a rat skeller? Auf Deutsch. It is a seller. Yeah, it is. Okay, it's a seller. And where she just is going to find some money down there by converting her scholar, or monk, into a scholar. Let's see, and so Jen could go back to the town one more time and hire somebody else. I think she's pretty happy with that. Yeah. Or she could get herself another scholar so that her scholars... Yeah, okay, actually Jen's going to go with that. Okay, there we go. So we're all done. And see, now once again, there's no overlap, so everybody can just do their stuff independently. I am moving it. I got to move it, move it. Let's see, now I have to move along the road. So I'm going to go this way, and so this time I got some cheese, which is worth two points. And then I'm going to build another building. Okay. Now, all these buildings are worth nothing to me. I've got to get up to here at least so they'll be worth two points, or three points, or four points. Because sooner or later, I've got to start worrying about this, or all these buildings will have been worth very little. Although right now, they're about to be worth five points, you know, because of the event. All right, so that's everything I was doing. Very simple. Jen is doing a little bit more. She's making more wine. Delicious. She is making four bucks. All right. So that's four points she just made. Starting to turn her fortunes around. 
and she hired another scholar. There we go. Which allows her to move forward three on the progress track. One, two, three, where she just made three bucks. One, two, three. All right, Jen is starting to turn around. And now this little person she got, this guy is almost worth three points, although currently he's only worth two. Okay, so that's everything Jen did. Oh, wait. oh, and of course, she hired another monk. So Jen's not too, doing too bad. She's only drawn four guys a turn, unlike my six, but she's got a lot more flexibility because a lot of the guys she draws are monks and they stand in for anything. All right, so that was all that. Now I get five bucks or five points for my five guild houses, thanks to the uh, income event. And so now at the end of the turn, we change turn order, which again, almost never matters. In fact, actually, Jen and I, we really don't keep track of it. And every once in a while, maybe there's a situation where it matters because we both want to do the same thing. Then we just count the tiles, remembering that you know one of us was the first player, and it's easy to tell whose turn was first. That's what we do, but I'm just trying to be thorough here. So anyway, there's a new event. And it's, oh, no hiring monks. They're, they've gone on another pilgrimage. Is that their second pilgrimage, I think? So they're going to have one more pilgrimage. So there's a moratorium on hiring monks this turn. That's bad news for Jen because that's what she's set up to do. All right, so I get another buck because I'm once again the king of the farmers. And um, we start drawing. I draw my six guys. One, two, three, four, five. I don't see my knight. <gasps> oh, wait, what are you doing, buddy? just want to take a break. Uh, he does not want to get on the road again. Wow, well, although I don't need a knight because I automated my wagon, so I could still travel on the road and pick up this wine, and I basically will have done this little loop, and then probably I need to start, I need a ship captain so I can start traveling on the water. Oh, well, what the heck, I might as well. On the road again. Don't need that knight to get on the road again. But I've, still, I've got all these guys. I got, well, let's see, I've automated my dwarf, so I should probably use my dwarf. The life I love is making dwarfs with my friends. And let's see, a farmer plus a, a, a carpenter can't really do anything. So you know what? I think it's time to sub, give up one of these um, farmers, send them off to help with the public works. I've got two of them and I don't need that many. I mostly just have them so I could pull ahead on the farmer track. So I'm going to start thinning out my deck. Because I've got my starter farmer and I've got another farmer. So I think I'm fine with that. All right, so that's what I'm doing. Now what's Jen doing? She's drawing four. One, two, three. Oh, come on. Oh, you terrible monks. Oh, they are the laziest monks ever. Look at that. Three of them in there. Oh, that is suck a, suck a duck. Oh, man. So, she got her scholar, but remember, there's a stupid pilgrim. Oh, they're off on their pilgrimage. How thematically appropriate. On the pilgrimage, they would not come out of the cup. So, Jen could put this here, but she can't hire. Wow, that's a bummer. And, so Jen could put it here, but again, she can't make her four bucks in the cellar either. Gosh darn it. Well, let's see. I guess Jen's going to the dwarf. Huh. And then, these guys, can they do anything? If she had a knight, she could go to the scriptorum. Nope, but she can't. Wow, that is such a bummer. That is a bum mer. All right, but anyway, so that's all Jen's doing. Well, okay, but I guess she'll make some more wine, of course. So at least she's doing that. So the wine's still producing. Okay, so Jen's set up, I'm set up. I'm, a draw, I'm on the road again, and I just picked up some wine, which is worth three points again. And let's see. All right, and I'm sending this guy off to the rat house. To, um, to help with some stuff. You know what, what the heck? I will help with the sewer as well, just to start working up here, because I, I need to start doing this so my houses will be worth something. Okay, and ah, so these guys are on the wagon. Now we have a situation. Both Jen and I have gone to the village at the same time. And so suddenly player turn order does matter. Although, actually, you know what? It doesn't because if there was only one left of anything, then it would matter. But it doesn't because we can't really compete with each other. But you know what? Jen might want to wait. She might, I'm not going to do my thing until you do your thing. So I would have to go first. And let's see, what am I going to do? What am I going to do in the dwarf? Dwarf loves golf. Um, well, there's not much automation left. So I think I'm going to do some more automation. And so I got another one of these guys. And I get another automation opportunity. 
And let's see. So I'm down to one knight, right? Yeah. Maybe I just want to automate my other knight. So I don't have to worry about knight staying home at all. I'll keep it. Yeah, I think I'll do that. What the heck? Let's just make the most efficient travel building operation ever. Or, see now I've done this whole loop. There's nothing else on the road. Well, I can get this cheese and I can come up here. Well, but maybe I want to start traveling on the water. Maybe I want to automate the night over here and start boating it. I only have one ship captain though. There's not a good chance I'm going to draw him amongst all my guys. On the flip side, I could automate him. So when I get a knight, I do this. When I don't get a knight, I do this. That's pretty cool. Let's do that. I, I like that. Okay, so there we go. So, and now Jen, she went to the dwarf as well. Uh, what is she going to do? Is she going to automate? Or is she going to buy another building? I think she's going to buy another building. There we go. And she's going to buy this building that turns her... Um... Now, this is a building where you can put anybody on it. And then what you do is, you can spend up to three bucks to move up to three spaces. And now that works really well. Jen makes her money in the, in the cellar, and then she spends it at the apothecary to increase. That's a really nice one, too. That's what Jen's going to do. She's pretty happy with that. That's pretty cool, because anybody can go to the apothecary. All right, so that's what Jen's done. All right, and I think we're all done. So the event happens, which was nobody can hire. So we're all done. Next round, moving on. And it's another building, building, building. And I get a point because I'm the king of farmers. And so now we start drawing again. I draw six. One tooth. There's the knight. Three, four. In fact, actually, wait, I get everybody. Yeah, I've just drawn my entire deck. Now this is interesting as well. Okay, I drew six. Because I'd saved some left over, I pretty much filled up the whole area. If I had saved so many, like say I had these four, and then I get to draw six, I can only draw four. Because this market, is, it's the maximum size. You can't store any more here for saving up for later turns. But as it happened, it worked out perfect for me. Jen, meanwhile, she's drawing four. Those monks, they better be back from this pilgrimage is all she has to say. She wants to see three monks now. One, two, three. That's not good. Come on, there are two more monks in here. Oh, I hate you monks, says Jen. Okay, so, and we start um, planning our actions. Oh crap, oh, this guy should have been in here because Jen made another wine. I missed that last turn. Oopsie doops. All right, although, so, actually I should draw again, but anyway, we'll just go with it. All right, so what is Jen gonna do? Um, well, she's got her monk and her scholar now. So she can make more money, but you know what? I think she wants to make more monks because she just keeps sucking it, drawing monks. So she will send her scholar here. She will send her, since she didn't get any merchants, she'll send her monk here to make more wine because she only got one more wine. Then she doesn't have to worry about her winery anymore. It's dead to her. And she will have maxed out and gotten all the wine before anybody else did. And then that leaves these guys. So uh, uh, this guy, can't do anything by himself. If he had a knight, he could go to the scriptorum. These two can't really do anything by themselves either. That's kind of lame. Well, Jen doesn't have to do the last wine. She can wait on that. Yeah, I think she will. What's she going to do instead? She is going to... She want to go to the dwarf again? Oh wait, oh no! Okay, yeah, or does she just want to make her money? Yeah, maybe she just wants to make her money. She can do the wine later. It's not going any place. And that leaves these two, a farmer, uh, she only had a, but she kept, she keeps sending all her craftsmen off to work on the sewers, so she cannot hire another farmer, which she would like to do. And see, so things are getting interesting now. There's starting to be a lot of choices. Although, you know what I think Jen's going to do? Yeah, she's going to start using her combo. There we go. And so this sea captain isn't going to do anything. Okay. So there we go. Is that what she's doing? Yes. Perfect. Okay, now me. Am I going to get on the road again? I, yes, I'm, I'm going to get on the river again. Just can't wait to get on the river again. So I'm going to move down the river and pick up this yarn. I think it's yarn, which is the second. Well, these are worth four points, and then I'll be down here. And then I can get some more cloth, which is worth five points. Yay! And when I get down there, will I be able to build another house? Uh, no, because I put my knight there. But as I could just... Keep, I could just keep on keeping on. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. So the boat, and yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's just do that. Let's just, let's just drive on through the night. And then I still got all these guys. What are they gonna do? Three carpenters and, all right, so I will go on ahead and put a carpenter and so I'll hire another farmer. And then I got two carpenters. What am I gonna do with them? You know, a whole lot of nothing. 
I think they're going to go help contribute to the greater good, and I'm just going to thin them out of my deck. Although, well, I, I, I still need carpenters to build. Okay, I'll just get rid of one, and I'll keep one of them around. Yeah, okay, there we go. That's pretty cool. All right, so there we go. Done. And Jen's done. Okay, so Jen is first. She'll go on ahead and get another monk who will then stay and hide and never come out. And then me, I'm going to go on ahead and drop this guy off. See, there's also first come, first serve up here. If, um, so, you know, Jen is, t she, um, I can't use these guys to get more points or more um, progress points. So I guess I'll send him here because at least he'll make me two bucks. Any place else. I'd love to send him here for three points, but there's only knights and monks up there. So he'll come here, and that gets me two more points. And I've thinned out my deck a little bit more. Um, right, and so it's Jen's turn again. She will go to the cellar and make four more bucks. Let's just take a five and put a one back. And then it's me again. And now I'm going to take a boat ride. I'm on a boat, yeah. There we go. And I just picked up some four-pointer yarn. And now it's Jen's turn again. She is now going to go to the apothecary, her farmer for after the get-go, and she is going to give up three bucks. She is losing three points to go up one, two, three. And so if she ever starts making, you know, so she wants to start collecting more of these guys, and you can see she can potentially collect more of them along this line and increase their value. And she still has the opportunity to start, I mean, I, you know, I've built a lot of houses. Jen can start building houses late in the game. We're only halfway through. Okay, and so Jen did that, and I am now back on the road again. And so I'm coming here, and I picked up another, wow, I am cleaning up. And I skipped building up, but it's fine. It was worth it. Okay, and so I think those are all my actions. Oh, wait, oh, and I also got another farmer. And which got me some cheese, Gromit. Cheese, Gromit. Where's the cheese? Okay, here we go. Which is worth three, two points. Okay, so there we go. That's that. And those are all my actions, I think. Those are all Jen's actions, I believe. And so now we um, do the event. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I get five more points off of that income event. And so now player order changes. It's the next event. And wow, so far we've had none of the taxes and none of the harvest. When tax, they are in here somewhere. Let's just take a look. All right, there's time. Harvest means you have to give up one food stuff, and if you don't have any food stuff, you have to give up five bucks or five points. So there's the harvest, and then here's the taxes. For every three tiles you have, you have to lose a point. And see, now both of them, well, this, see, ah, Jen currently has one, two, three, four, five, six tiles. So she has to lose two points every time this comes up, and it's going to come up three times. So Jen's looking at losing six points here. Me, I got a lot of tiles. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is going to happen to me three times where I'm going to lose nine points off of all these taxes that are coming. And we have three harvests coming. So they're all saving up to the end. And this means every time it comes, you have to give up food, which is wheat, cheese, or wine. Now Jen's, you know, Jen's got all these wines to make, and she's got the wheat. I've got a couple of wheat, so I'm not worried about giving up some wheat. So those aren't going to hit us very bad. And then we have one more pilgrimage that's still coming, which is really just only going to bother Jen, not me. And those are what all the events still are, and I haven't shuffled them up very well, but it's all bad news from now on. All the good stuff that ever happened to us is never going to happen again. It's all um, taxes, taxes, taxes from now on. We've gone through all the death. Now it's just taxes for the end of the game, and we know it's coming. Um, and I know it's going to hit me, but you don't know, still, nobody has built this building that lets you avoid negative impact. Although, really, this is best used to avoid the plagues, which, you know, we didn't. All right, so anyway, so that's the new event, which is going to be, well, this is nice. This is an opportunity for Jen to make points, because she's going to score three points, because she's way up here. I'm not going to score anything, because I'm way down there. And if she can cross the line again this round, she could score four points off that tile. So, things are still going pretty well for her. And remember, i got to start working on this progress where all my buildings are worth nothing. Including this guy I will win for having the most buildings. So, we're a little bit more than halfway through the game. And I think you guys get the idea. Uh, let's just, um, let's see, I get one more buck because I'm still king of the farmers. I get to draw six. One, two, there's my knight again. Good boy. Three, four, five, six, and Jen, she wants to see nothing but monks now, because this is all monks in her card. One, two, three, four, look at that! She has almost 50% monks, and she still doesn't get them. 
she is definitely going to start cleaning house. She is going to start firing these people left and right so she can just draw her monks. This is getting redonkulous. So because she didn't get a monk, she's not going to be able to use her rat sculler. Although she doesn't need to, she's got money, she'll still be able to go to the apothecary and move farther forward. She'll be able to do that. She'll be able to get another monk. But I think this guy and this other guy, I think they're both getting fired this turn. Just so she can start upping her chance of getting monks. Because both of them, let's see, she can, um, she maybe could actually do this canal, can canalization by herself and get this guy. But, so she's definitely going to fire a couple guys. This is going to get her another monk. Another guy is going to go to the apothecary. And this guy is going to do nothing. And unfortunately, she'd fire this guy if she could, but she can't because he's one of her starters. So that's what Jen's going to do. And I'm probably going to travel again. I'm going to build another house. And, oh, see, I got to, these houses are not doing me good. I need to start doing this. I need to start hiring some scholars. Or, uh, you know, if, I, know, I need to do, I need to automate this in the scriptorum, because then my knight can just, I can start using my knight to start climbing one at a time. Or maybe I need to build the bibliotech so I can start going up two at a time. But the thing is, I, I've, been, I've been traveling around scoring interim points, but no in-game points if I don't make this happen. So, but you, get, you start to get the idea. I mean, we're drawing a lot of chips now. We're having a lot of options. Um, you know, we've both gone radically different paths. We're both doing very well. And that, folks, is why we enjoy Orléans so much. Now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.